Good morning, everyone. How you doing? Ain't God good? Made it here safe and sound. Amen, amen. And if he blesses us, we'll make it home safe and sound. It's just good to, good to be in the house. Amen. Well, join us this morning on a song everybody's pretty much familiar with. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I, I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad. Everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, 
as these brothers have so eloquently given in song, and they went on to say, he has made me glad. I wonder if there are any glad folk in the house today. Glad to be alive. Glad to be alive and in the Lord's house. Glad to be alive and in the Lord's house, ready to give him praise. Is that anybody today? Come on, put your hands together. Yeah, God is a faithful God. And uh, he doesn't have to do anything for us. He's already done so much for us. And somebody ought to be glad about that. I want you to meet me in the book of Ephesians, if you will. Chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Paul is writing to this church at Ephesus. Uh, he wants them to know something about Christ. And um, as we celebrate 129, 129 years of, of church, it's appropriate to be reminded about Christ. And he talks about the mystery that has been revealed in Christ. That's what he spends chapter 3 doing. But then he wants to give the purpose of the mystery. And starting at verse 8, we'll pick up rather at verse 8. To me, he says, who am less than the least of all the saints. This grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purposes which he accomplished in Jesus Christ our Lord in whom we have watch this boldness and access with confidence through faith in him therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. He says that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Then he closes that thought. He says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in him, rather in us. He goes on to say, to him be glory in the church. It's his church. He says, by Christ Jesus to all generations, not just today, but he says forever. You better read it back. And ever. And then he says, amen. That's a powerful text, isn't it? Lord, we thank you uh, for, for revealing the purpose of the mystery and how, Lord, you have a wonderful way of causing all things to work according to the counsel of your will. And we celebrate that today, Lord. We celebrate Jesus with all of the pollution and quagmire and the filth that we endure in this world. It's just good to know that you have a purpose for the church. You have a purpose for each individual that makes up the church. And so on this Lord's Day, we come to celebrate Jesus. We come to focus on who he is and not only what he accomplished in redemption, but what he's doing now and the fact that he's going to come back. 
fact that one day we will reign and rule with him. Thank you, Lord. And we realize, Lord, that we are unworthy in and of ourselves. There's no pretense with you. You know who we are and what we are, and you know that we're works in progress. But he who has begun a good work in us, Lord, you're going you're gonna to finish it. You're going to get it done concerning Christ. And yes, we've come to worship you, but worship is not worship unless you help us. Our minds have a tendency to wander, so we need you to help us to focus. Sometimes our hearts are so hard that we, we just perform, but we don't want to do that. You've been too good. So we pray that you will humble us even now. As we sing, we're not singing words that we rehearse, but we're singing from the depths of our hearts. When we pray, we're not impressing people with our verbiage or our vocabulary, but we, we're praying God sincerely because we know you answer prayers. And even when the word goes forth, it's not a homily, but it's a message from on high. So we pray that you would help us to worship you on your terms. We do pray that you would forgive us of our sins, Lord. You are a holy God. Your word teaches us holiness without. We can't even see you. So help us to live up to the calling that you have on our lives. And then, Lord, we, we're not unaware that there may be some amongst us who are not saved. So we pray that you would prick hearts today, save souls today. Others may be saved, but they've backslidden. So we pray for the backslider. Others may be saved and perhaps not backslidden, but they, they don't have the kind of zeal that they once had. So help us all to be revived even today. And we do realize, Lord, that the enemy would do something if, you don't hold him back, so we pray that you would hold him back so that all of your people can be on one accord as we lift holy hands to a holy God. Lord, the glory is already yours. It's uniquely yours. But we beg you for the blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give him glory in the house, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Give him glory.
the sun was brightly shining and the wind was blowing but not too strong in a treetop just a few feet away a robin was singing a song church i don't know what he was singing but pretty soon he was on his way but who the say he wasn't being grateful and said thank you for another day everybody ought to praise his name come on help me church praise him praise his name everybody ought to praise his name oh yeah cause if a robin can say thank you you can do it too you can do it Everybody ought to praise his name. Come on, help me, church. Praise him. Praise his name. Everybody ought to praise his name. Oh, yeah. Because if a robin can say thank you, you can do it too. You can do oh, it. Oh, everybody ought to praise his name. Come on, help me, church. Praise him. Everybody ought to praise his name. Oh, yeah. Because if a robin can say thank you, you can do it too. You can do it too. Everybody ought to praise his name. He made you in his image. You ought to praise his name. Everybody ought to praise his name. Oh, yeah. Because if a robin can say thank you, you can do it too. You can do it too. If a robin can say, that's a whole lot of theology in that song. I don't know what's going on. Amen. Amen. But <laughs> y'all, y'all missed it. He said, if a robin, I don't want to rehearse the song, but well, that's a whole lot of theology in there. Let everything, is that, that is Bible, right? Yeah. That hath breath, praise the Lord. It's prayer time, y'all. Y'all, look at it, it. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's prayer time. Why don't you stand? The robin, say thank you. You can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 worthy of thinking about, isn't it? Amen. Well, we have so many reasons uh, for which to be thankful. And uh, for many so many reasons we should be uh, praising God. And I'm looking at so many people who have been blessed uh, by God's healing hand. Yeah. Yes. I, um, I don't want to take for granted. Uh, Mickey was uh, in a bad way just a few weeks ago. I mean, she was in a bad way, but the Lord brought her back. And uh, we're thankful for her. Brother Rene, bless you. You, you were incapacitated for a little while, but God is working on you day by day. Let's give God glory for him. God is a, God is a healer. I don't know if you know what that means, but when you've been on your bed of affliction and the Lord brings you out, is that right, Brother Stevens? We, we saw, we were praying for him uh, probably a month ago, a little less than a month ago, and uh, and the Lord brought him back. And I talked to him today, and he said he's getting stronger day by day. Come on, give God glory for him. These men behind us are singing, but all of them have testimonies. And you, you have a testimony, you ought to be able to sing and, or, or talk or do something. Tell somebody what God has done. We're praying for Kena Darden. I want you to lift her in your prayers. 
Uh, she's had some medical issues, uh, but God is, is working in her life. And uh, when the saints pray, God, God hears us, and he answers us according to his will. And so uh, we thank God. Sister Lacey, is that you over there, Sister Lacey? Amen. Let's praise God for her. Yeah. God is a good God. God is a good God. Let's sing one verse of that song. We, so much national tragedy is going on, and you, you've heard any number of things that's going on uh, nationally and globally. We always pray for the country, the leaders and churches and all that, that God will have his way. Amen. And pray for one another. Let's do that. I love that. Come on. Yeah. Praising everyone. Praise him. Come on. Praise him. Come on. Praise him. Yeah. You know it. Lift your voice. Praise him. He's a blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy to. Come on. Do that like you mean it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise him. Lift your voice and praise him. Praise him. Call his name. Jesus. Come on. Let's just praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy. To Come on. There's another part. From the rising of the sun. Come on. From the rising of the sun. Yeah. Until the gold. Worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Praise him. Lift your voice. Praise him. Jesus. Blessed Savior. you to pray right now in your own inner person even all over the sanctuary I want you to pray I'll close the prayer but I want you to start praying right now for your immediate sphere and then pray for somebody else let's do it all over the building all over the building open your mouth this is not a library go ahead and talk to him come on if you will In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give him glory. You ought to do it. You ought to do it. Come on, come on, keep it going. Come on, come on. He's worthy. Boys and sing like you believe it. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Please.
please have your seats. Please have your seats. Yes. Please have your seats. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Do we have any first time guests with us in the house today? Any first time, any first timers? Amen. I see you, young person, young man. God bless you. Any? Amen. I see you. Yes, sir. Amen. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for sharing with us today. We're just glad, glad, glad about it. Our ushers have identified you, and once we will have completed today's worship ex exercise or uh, worship experience, I should say, we'll meet you. I'll meet you right in our welcome center and talk to you personally. We're just glad that you've come to worship with us today, and we celebrate you. We really do. We really do. Amen. We do have a few announcements. I, I would to God that Brother Harris will offer an announcement. Uh, Brother uh, Rockamore, did you, did you delegate that? Okay, he left. Okay, so Bridget, you're going to give that. Okay. All right, y'all. Y'all just, just come on. Amen. <laughs> First, <laughs> amen. Say good morning, greater Mount Zion. I stand before you with an invitation from the Independent Missionary Baptist General Association of Texas Brotherhood Auxiliary. Mm -hmm. Every year we have a musical, and this year our musical was supposed to be on the 5th, but it was changed to the 19th, mm -hmm. which is this coming Friday. So I'm asking all families, friends, and loved ones to come out and help us praise the Lord in song. We always have a great time at rehearsal. Brother Roussard, Brother Tony Brown, and some of our brothers will be singing and participating in the musical, and we need your support. Mm -hmm. So make it a family affair. Bring your whole family out and help us uplift the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like was said earlier, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So we want to come out and do just that. Thank you. Brother Harris, where is oh, it going to be again? It's going to be at Mount Hebron Missionary Baptist Church, mm -hmm. and the flyers are still on both entrance doors with all the information on them. So please take one and, and come out and support us. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm just standing before you to announce or to talk about the church anniversary. Mm -hmm. 129 years. Amen. Okay, I'm going to say it again. 129 years. Come on, come on. That's better, that's better, that's better, that's better. We give our praises to God, for we know it was nobody but him that allowed us to make it to 129. <laughs> hey, yeah. So this after, immediately after church, we're going to ask that the um, biblical feast captains and their monthly uh, team members meet immediately after church, because on next Saturday, at 3 o'clock, we will have our birthday feast, which is something that we do every year other than the years that we were, you know, not here. But <laughs> in that case, please meet shortly so we can go over the uh, grounds and so you'll know what's happening on that. Also, we want to uh, say that on next Sunday, the third Sunday, we're going to be looking to have something from our youth for the church anniversary because we know that we're putting it in their hands as we start, right? And then on the culmination, on the fourth Sunday, the young adults are going to have a presentation. And we praise God for our youth. We praise God for our young adults because we know we need them to carry on. We stood on somebody's shoulders. They're standing on our shoulders, and we look forward to what they have for us. So therefore, meet uh, immediately at the church for just a few moments and then look ready to tell your people, tell your family, tell your friends to come on out on next Saturday for food, fellowship, and fun. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Did you have, you didn't have anything? Okay. All right. Amen. Let's pay attention to those announcements and govern ourselves accordingly. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Bible study Tuesday. Uh, Bible study Thursday. Amen. All right. It's offering time. Praise the, Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Let's worship uh, with our gifts. We realize that um, church 
uh, supported by its membership. Amen. And uh, we thank God for you down through the years, as has been stated. Uh, those, those saints of old in 1895, uh, they didn't have a lot, but they, they paid what they called they, their dues. Yeah, they would come down to the church house and uh, worship in overalls. 1895. And um, look what God has done. Amen. Let's, let's, um, let's keep it moving. Amen. Come on, Sister Fish. She want to say something. Come on up here. Come on. Amen. Y'all give her some love as she comes. I knew she wanted to say something. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I just wanted to give a little history and, and uh, about Greater Mount Zion. You know, I've been here almost, well, I've been here a long time. <laughs> Almost, almost. Uh, uh, the church wasn't too old when I was born. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and therefore, I just want to say that um, we had a wonderful, we only had, out of 129 years, we only had nine pastors. Mm -hmm. The Reverend Alfred was here for 31 years. Mm -hmm. The Reverend Carrington was here for 36 years. Mm -hmm. And during Reverend Carrington's service here, we well, Reverend Alfred and I built a frame church. We had the old church. And then Reverend Carrington, a vision came to Reverend Carrington to build a new church. Mm -hmm. 1961, Reverend Carrington built a brand new church, brick. We thought we were doing something. We been, had this brand new brick church and all. He went to Krogan <laughs> Building Material, which is still on Yale, and Reagan Bank, which is changed now. And they worked with us. And we built that church. And then, uh, but while we were building that church, we had the old church we could worship at. And then, in 2005, Reverend Dr. Burgess came. <laughs> and <laughs> let me tell you about him. He, he came by 2011. He renovated that whole church. Took out all that asbestos. <laughs> all that, all those, all those dog walls. You know, we had the dog brown walls. Bitch, come on. <laughs> all of that, uh, everything made the church white, beautiful, bright light, new mic, everything. New flooring. He did it all over. Y'all catch her on the parking lot after that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, while he was doing all this, we met. It's Carl Brown's funeral home. Amen. Now, hold on. Now, go ahead back to your seat. I got to grab your note. I'm trying to figure out how you remember all that stuff. <laughs> she did that from her mind, y'all. I'm telling you. I'm serious. She called all those dates and all of that stuff from her mind. And, and she's 85. Amen. Let's give God glory for a sound mind. It's offering time. Come on. Let's give... Amen. Come on, young people. Come on. Y'all give these young people some love as they come. We thank you so much, those who work with these young people. You're helping to raise them. Amen. Amen. Y'all heard her. She said, stand up, if you will.
bring y'all something a little different this morning. Well, it ain't really different. We want to bring something back. Uh, show y'all been here a while. Y'all have actually been privy to this, but um, I haven't until just now. But just this weekend, you'll see it when y'all see it. trust in thee. That's why I'm asking you, Lord, please, Lord, help me to hold out. I need you to help me. Lord, help me to hold out. Help me to hold out. Give me the patience. Lord, help me. Help me to hold out. Until way may not be easy. You did not say that it would be. When it gets dark and I cannot see my way, you told me to put my trust in it. That's why I'm begging you, Lord, help me. Help me to hold out. Give me the patience, Lord. I need you to help me to hold out. Please, sir, Jesus. Lord, help me. Help me to hold out. Until. Until my change. I need you to Lord, help me. help me to hold out. I need you to help, Lord, me. help me to hold out. Keep me patient. Lord, help me to hold out. Fight my Lord, battle, Lord. Help me to hold out. I need Lord, you. Need to hold out. I need you in the morning. Lord, help me to hold out. I need you in the evening. I need you in the midnight Lord, hour. Help me to hold out. I need Lord, you, Lord. Lord, Lord. Help me. Help me to hold out. Help me. I need you to help me. I need you, Lord. I need your patience. Lord, help me to hold out. I need your strength. Lord, help me to hold out. I need you, Lord. Lord help me to hold out. I need you, Lord. Lord help me to hold out. I'm not worthy, Lord, help me to hold out. but I need you, Lord. Lord help me to hold out. You 
save me. You save me. And I need you. And I need you, Lord. Help me. I need you, Lord. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Help me to hold out, please, sir. Lord, please, Lord. Help me to hold out. Give me the patience, Lord. Lord, Lord. I need you to hold out until. God for giving us the stick to itness. Amen. I'm not sure what y'all are doing. I need this back up, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. Let's do that. Amen. Amazing grace. Let's stand. Thank you so much. Dad. That's it right there. Right there. That's good. Perfect. Amen. Amazing grace. Thank you. Yeah. Let's sing one verse of this. And the next voice you will hear will be that of Dr. Lewis Harrison. Amen. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on. We might as well sing through many dangers. Come on. We might as well do that one. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Why don't we praise God now? Praise God. 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 Father in heaven, we come to another preaching moment. We pray, God, that you will magnify your presence in this place. Lord, I ask that you allow me to decrease as you increase in the eyes of your people. Let your word go forth unhindered that sinners might be saved. 
backsliders be recovered, that the saints of God be edified, and you, my Father, be glorified. Please don't let us leave here in the same condition in which we came. Give us a closer walk with thee. Take us from where we are to where you want us to be so that we can be everything you want us to be. Please let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. And God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Psalm number 100. Psalm 100. And while you find it, I want to thank God and thank our pastor for this opportunity to share with you. Having been a pastor, I am uniquely aware that Dr. Burgess doesn't have to share this pulpit with anyone, but he shares it with me, and I'm grateful for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalm number 100, very familiar psalm, one of my favorite. Yes, sir. Make a joyful shout unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Amen. You may be seated. I want to share with you today, I've entitled, I've tagged the text, Invitation to a Party. It is B-Y-O-P. You got to bring your own praise. Dr. Burgess recently began a new series of sermons entitled A Closer Look at the Church in honor of this church's 129 years of existence. I know he is examining the foundation and the function and the fabric of the church, but I'd like to take a look at this psalm and what it suggests about our worship. Anybody here ever been invited to a party, but it was BYOB? Y'all know what that means. I know, I know, I know. You're supposed to bring your own bottle. Uh, somebody say you bring your own booze. Or you bring your own beer. But here's an invitation to a party, but it's BYOP. You got to bring your own praise. Psalm 100 can be seen as an invitation to a party where God is the honoree. Now, I understand we ought to praise him every day. But every Sunday ought to be a special praise party. GMZ, the fact that we've been here for 129 years is reason to praise the Lord. You know, in the world, we got to deal with dismay and distress and disappointment. But, you know, when we were in the world, when the weekend comes, come on now, don't, 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 don't leave me up here by myself. See, we used to put up with stuff Monday through Thursday. Couldn't wait till Friday. Call it TGIF, right? Plan all week to party on Friday. Well, since we are now in the world, but we're not of the world, we ought to feel the same way about Sunday. I know we used to come in church hungover <laughs> from the party, but now we ought to come to church to party. Deal with stuff in this world all week long. Sunday ought to be praise party time. 
come ready to hear a word, to have your burdens lifted, to give God praise for all that he has done. See, the psalmist is inviting us, and we should invite others to come to God's praise party every single Sunday. Now, when we look at this psalm, some theologians suggest it's the climax to a collection of what they call royal psalms. Psalm 100 is like a, a theocratic coronation, one note of joy after another. It, it demonstrates God's goodness. It makes clear the significance and the relevance and the seriousness of worshiping God. Psalm 100 indicates a thankfulness because God has granted us a great deliverance. Anybody here been delivered? It, it, has God brought you through anything? Has God brought you out of anything? Has he picked you up and turned you around and placed your feet on solid ground? Has he made a way out of no way? Well, this psalm's for you. Yeah, you, you ought to leave here today worshiping and praising God and passing out invitations for next week's praise party. Psalm 100 reminds me of three things that we ought to be joyful, mindful, and thankful. Right in the text. Let's see what he says about being joyful. The first two verses. The first one gives, tells us he makes a joyful decree. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. If you're passing out invitation to God's praise party, you ought to be joyful about it. King James says make a joyful noise. But the, the meaning is, is to raise a noise by shouting, not whispering. It's a joyful noise. It's a joyful shout, not a joyful whisper. It figuratively means to, to split the ears with sound, to shout for joy. Yes, sir. Now, can I testify just for a moment? Yes, I, I was reared Catholic, okay. and, and I was used to going to church that was quiet. I'm not hating on Catholicism at all. But I just remember when I was young, we used to laugh at Baptist people. Look at them in that church making all that noise. But the more I read my Bible, the more noise I want to make. The more I read my Bible, the more shouting I want to do. The more I read my Bible, the less I want to be in a quiet church. Now, my nature hasn't changed, my under but my understanding of worship has changed. Worship is not about me and what I like. It's about the God I serve and what he commands. God is the object of our worship. God wants a joyful shout or a joyful noise. Because when I think about Jesus and all that he's done for me, it just makes me want to Makes me want to shout. Yeah, yeah. See, when we were in the world, <laughs> when we were at the club, when we were at the party, we made a joyful noise. Come on now, get real. Some of y'all smiling. I see you. you. You remember back in the day or maybe yesterday. Or some, <laughs> I don't know, but, but you know, we... You know, back, I'm talking, I'm, I'm a little old, you know, back in my day, I, I can see, I see, Brother Jimmy, I see you in the club, brother. Go, Jimmy, go, Jimmy, it's your birthday. Y'all know how we used to do it. Somebody, anybody, everybody, scream. The roof, the roof, come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I used to, even my mom, I used to hear him, oh, sucky, sucky now. We made a joyful shout when we were having fun out there. Yeah. And I bet if I throw on the right song right now, they'd have to hold some of y'all down. <laughs> I 
I remember one Sunday after church, we were leaving out, and that brother hit a, a note on, that, on those drums, and I had to catch myself. Eh? You see, we used to go to the club and turn up. Now we come into church and turn down for what? See, you got to remember that genuine praise is vocal, it's visible, and it's vivid. Yes. Sometimes it'll run out your eyes in the form of tears. Sometimes it'll run up your arms and through your hands and make you raise your hands in the air. Come on now, somebody know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it'll run up through your vocal cords and make you shout. But true praise has to be expressed. It's vocal and God doesn't get any glory when we stifle and hide our praise. Got to learn how to let God, let go and let God, let, let him do what he does in our lives. After all that he has done for us, we ought to be glad to make a joyful noise. But not only is, a, is that a joyful decree, but it has a joyful direction. Where do we go with this, with these invitations? All ye lands. Do you see that in the text? Now, I understand, this is Old Testament, I understand if he said make a joyful shout unto the Lord, O ye Israel. Or even if we brought it into the New Testament and say make a joyful shout unto the Lord, all ye Christians. But it says all ye lands. He directs it to all the nations of the earth to praise it. In other words, the invitations go out to everybody, pass them out to anybody. That, that's what Jesus was saying in Matthew 8, 28, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Don't keep God's goodness to yourself. There's plenty enough for all ye lands. But not only the decree, the joyful decree and joyful direction, there is a joyful duty. Verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Our singing and shouting ought to lead to serving. I love A.W. Tozer said, God wants worshipers before workers. Indeed, the only acceptable workers are those who have learned the art of worship. But don't stop at worship. Worship should lead to service. Don't come out and shout on Sunday and refuse to serve on Monday. Talk ought to match your uh, your, your walk and serving the Lord with gladness is what we ought to be doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we serve the Lord by serving others. Right. Yeah, yeah, our vertical worship should lead to horizontal service. Yes, right. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can see the cross in there. Our vertical worship should lead to horizontal service. We serve him by serving them. Yes, sir. We, we serve them by serving. We serve him by serving them. James says faith without works or service is dead. A true worshiper serves with gladness. They ought to be happy to serve. And he says, come before his presence with singing. You ever listen to, listen to anybody that's happy about what they're doing? They start singing while they're serving. See, when you sing, you're glad about what you're doing. You're glad about your service. Serving the Lord with gladness will put some singing in your Even if you can't sing, it ought to put some singing in your service. And knowing the Lord has kept GMZ for 129 years ought to put some singing in our service. But not only should we be joyful, we have to be mindful. Look at verse 3. We have to be mindful of his person. Know ye, know that the Lord, he is God. Know, we got to know him. We've got to acknowledge him. We got to be aware of him. We have to be mindful of him. In other words, Realize who you're praising and do it with reference. 
Pastor has told us on several occasions, don't get it twisted. We, God is not your partner. He's not your buddy. He's not the big man upstairs. He is the awesome ruler of the universe, and he ain't nobody to play with. Now, you wouldn't walk up to the president and go, what's up, Joe? No, it's Mr. President or President Biden. Well, God is greater than Joe. God is worthy of the highest praise, and he's worthy of the highest respect. You are to be mindful of his person. But not only that, be mindful of his power. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. It's he that made us means more than he created us, because he also created all the nations, even those who don't know him. But the we there means that he has chosen us. God chose you and I. You don't have to sing with Kirk Franklin to be God's property. You, he chose you. Be mindful of God's power. I wouldn't play with someone who has that kind of power. I don't know about you, but uh, I was brought up with a mama who always told us, I brought you in this world. I can take you out. Well, God is greater than mama. And if we were mindful of mama, we sure enough better be mindful of God. I wouldn't play with a God who can make everything out of nothing. I wouldn't play with a God who has the power to part a Red Sea, the power to take heat out of a fire, the power to lock the jaws of the lions, uh, the power to keep you through depression, recession, a pandemic, inflation, and anything else that comes along. I wouldn't play with that kind of God. He has all power. Also has the power to leave heaven, come here as a babe. Grow up, tell him, look, y'all going to kill me, I'm going to die, and I'm going to get up in three days and do just what he said he was going to do. I wouldn't play with a God with a power like that. If you want to play with somebody, you want to challenge somebody, and you want to disrespect somebody, God ain't the one. It says, and not we ourselves. And that phrase can be translated, and we are his because it connects with the next statement, which tells us to be mindful of his purpose. See, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are sheep. He is the shepherd. The shepherd's purpose is to take care of the sheep. In the 23rd Psalm, David told us, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He takes care of us. And that image of God's people as sheep is all through the scripture. And this verse uh, acknowledges God as creator, redeemer, and most of all, the shepherd. As sheep, we are to be submitted to the shepherd. We are dependent on him. Now, if you know anything about sheep, sheep are not the smartest animals in the world. Maybe that's why he call us sheep. We're not the small. Sheep, sheep don't do tricks. They, they have to be guarded. They, they will stray away. They don't have any defense, no claws, no sharp teeth. They're not fast. They're pretty much defenseless. So they need a shepherd. If sheep don't submit to the shepherd, they will stray into snares and suffering and sorrow. And somebody's been there and know exactly what I'm talking about. Sheep have to be mindful of the shepherd. Isaiah told us that we, like sheep, have gone astray. We turn everyone to his own way. When we don't follow the shepherd, we go our own way. And somebody just, somebody just coming back from going their, their own way. But we got to be mindful of the shepherd, and we got to be mindful of whose invitations we're passing out. Be mindful that your shepherd is watching over you, taking care of you, protecting you from danger, seen and unseen. Not only are you to be mindful of the shepherd, but you ought to be mindful of the under-shepherd, 
that God has blessed this church with. I'm almost done now. You, 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 you're joyful. We have to be mindful. But verses 4 and 5 remind us we need to be thankful. There's a requirement for this thankfulness. We see right in verse 4. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. We come into God's house. We're required to come in with some thanksgiving. That, that word thanksgiving means an extension of the hand. So we've got to make the sacrifice of praise. We confess God's character and his works by giving God his due praise. Come into God's gates. Tell of his goodness, his greatness, and express your gratitude for what he's done for you. Yeah. And now an important aspect of this word thanksgiving, if you look at it in the Hebrew, it means it's thankfulness, but it's directed only at God. There's another word when you're thinking other people, but this is especially for God. There are some things only God can do for you. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. There's some things that only God can do for you, and thanksgiving, that thanks you give, should only be toward him. See, an invitation to God's house is an invitation into his presence. It lets us know that true thanks are directly, directed only to God because he's the only true source. Oh, somebody, somebody got it. Y'all got to help me. He is the only true source. Everybody and everything else is a resource. He is the source. It might come through other people or other things, but God is the source. And it says, come into his courts with praise. Thanksgiving is accompanied by a sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise. Now, if praise is not your nature, make the sacrifice and praise him anyway. If you're quiet and shy, you don't like to make noise, make the sacrifice and praise him anyway. If, if you're cool, Calm and collective. Make the sacrifice and praise him anyway. If you don't get excited too easily, make the sacrifice and praise him anyway. If the Lord has done anything for you, you ought to make the sacrifice and praise him anyway. In the, in the Old Testament, it says, enter into his gate. We, we, they went into the temple in the Old Testament. Somebody's been to Sunday school. They learned about the different, the different courts. Yes, yeah, there are different courts for different people. Yes, so the outer courts was the court of the Gentiles. Right. Yeah, that, and then there were, anybody could go into the outer courts, but, but, but to go into the next court, this was the court of women, it, only Jewish women could go into that court. Then there was the court of the Israelites where only Jewish men can go in. Then there was the court of the priests, of the holy place where only the priests could go in. Then there was the holy of holies. And only the high priests could go in on the day of atonement. But when Jesus died, I say when Jesus died, that veil in the Holy of Holies was ripped from top to bottom. And that gave everybody access to all the courts. So we can go into God's courts with praise. Everybody that accepts him and confesses him can go into all of his courts. But guess what? You still got to bring your own praise. But that's the requirement for his thankfulness. But God doesn't just require us without giving us a reason. I see the reason in the text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 5. What does it say? For the Lord is good. <laughs> the Lord is good. That is an essential fact. 
His mercy is everlasting. That is an eternal fact. We don't just praise him because we're required to do it. God gives us good reason to praise him. We praise the Lord because his mercy is everlasting. In other words, we are not getting what we deserve. Uh, we can say God is good all the time, and we can only say that because his mercy is everlasting. In other words, if you're saved, he never gives us what we deserve, and that is burning in eternal hell. You see, I know my salvation is secure because his mercy is everlasting. I know why I thank him today, because his mercy is everlasting. I serve him today because his mercy is ever. I don't have to worry because his mercy is everlasting. Even if I slip up in sin, I know his mercy is everlasting. That's why I love the Lord because his mercy is everlasting. That's why you ought to praise him today because his mercy is everlasting. That's why you ought to give him some glory today because his mercy is everlasting. See, we live in a time right now, though, where we got people who talk about what they deserve. I deserve better, not me. Because if I got what I deserve, I'd be on my way to hell. If I got what I deserve, I would experience the wrath of God. But I can praise the Lord today because his mercy is everlasting. I can praise him because God withholds his wrath from my life. Yeah. Why? Because over 2,000 years ago, yeah. Jesus took my place yeah. on a cruel and contemptible cross. Yeah. And while he hung there, all my sins yeah. were transferred to him. Yeah. He died in my place. Yeah. God looked at Jesus and saw my sins. Yeah. And because of that, I know his mercy is everlasting. I never use it up. His mercy is everlasting. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 tells me we get a fresh batch every single day. Psalms 23, 6 tells me that surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. But what I love is at the end of this psalm, God gives us a guarantee. He says his truth endures to all generations. The Lord is good. That's the essential fact. His mercy is everlasting. That's an eternal fact. But his truth endures to all generations. That's an enduring fact. In other words, no matter how long, not a single promise of God's truth will ever, ever fail. And if his truth were good enough for Abraham, I said if it was good enough for Isaac, if it was good enough for Jacob, if it was good enough for the children of Israel, if it was good enough for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if it was good enough for Daniel in the lion's den, if it was good enough for Isaiah in the prophets, if it was good enough for Jesus' disciples, if it was good enough for Paul and Silas, yeah. if it was good enough for Big Mama Nim, it's good enough, it's good enough, it's good enough for me. It's good enough to keep this church for over 129 years. It's good enough for me. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him. Praise him in the midnight hour. Praise him because he's worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Last song, please say that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. 
You know, Hebrew for praise the Lord is just hallelujah. Can we be bilingual in here for a minute? Speak a little Hebrew. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on, give him glory in the house. Come on, give. The preacher done told you to bring your own praise. Come on, make some noise in the house. Yeah. You ought to, you ought to make some noise. You ought to make some noise. Yeah. Thank, thank God for reminding us that it's incumbent upon us to praise God. It's a wonderful reminder that all of us have reason to praise the Lord. Not, not most of us, not the majority of us, but every one of us. He said that if you've been delivered, that's what he said in the onset of, if you've been delivered, have you been delivered? We offer Christ to you. It's just, just makes sense that after hearing the word that you make a decision concerning Christ. First invitation goes out to those who have not placed their faith hitherto in Jesus. There, there's, there's a sense of urgency that all of us need to hear or to have, I should say. That this, this, old, this old building, our elders would say, is, is, is wearing out. Somebody said there's a leak in this old building. Y'all remember that song? And I think that's for all of us. We're all on our way out of here. You don't want to talk about it. And so every week, we need to tell you that Jesus, he died for your sins. That's what he said. He said he came from heaven to the earth to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. I want you to get that. Don't, don't leave out of here without having heard the invitation for you to come. The second invitation is for those who um, don't have a church home. I think it's important for us to know the importance of the church. Um, we grow together. We, we learn more and more about our Savior. And, uh, we, we hold each other accountable. We encourage us and all those things. We, and we come together and we, we praise, as he said, we, <laughs> we praise the Lord. Nothing like when we get together. And uh, so I want you to consider our church as a church home. Not a perfect church, but we serve a perfect God. Then lastly, uh, the invitation goes out to all of us to pray that someone will take his or her foot off the brake and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. I want you to pray right now that God will move on the altars of someone's heart. Someone who's not saved, someone who's not in the church, and ask that God will give them and us a sense of urgency. Would you do that all over the building? Would you do that? Would you do that? As we, yeah. Yeah, come on.
Yeah. New life. So come. Come on. Amen. Give him glory in the house. Thank you, young people. G encourage these, these young boys here. Would you give them some encouragement, please? Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Let's encourage Dr. Lewis Harrison. Let's do that. Thank God for him. Come on. Do, let's encourage him. Amen. I tell you. He preached out of his soul. Amen. I'm encouraged. Um, I'm encouraged. I'm challenged to praise God with even more vigor. He said it's vocal, and visible, and what else? There was another V. Vivid. Amen. I took notes. Amen. When I go out of town, I'm going to be like, yeah, bring your own praise. Amen. I'm gonna... <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's stand. But I can't do that because of YouTube now. That's the only downside to being on YouTube. You, you know. Amen. What a wonderful word today. Amen. Look forward to seeing you all this week. Uh, for our, um, certainly, the, Sister Whiting made the announcement about the birthday feast. That's Saturday. Amen. And then we have Bible study and all those things. So let's be mindful of that. Amen. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Help us, Lord to make a joyful noise unto you because you are good and your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. Y'all come shake Dr. Harrison's hand. Do that. Do that. Let him know. Encourage him if you will. Amen.
Yes, ma'am. Sister Whitey, can mm. you put Sister Rockamore's number on my face? I don't have her phone number um, on my thing here. Let me see. You don't have it in there? 